Her talk is entitled Morse Theory for Group Presentation. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Matias, uh, for the presentation. And uh, also many thanks to the organizers for inviting me, uh, Matias Eduardo Andoret. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk about uh, more theory for group presentations uh, and more precisely um, a refinement of the classical discrete more theory and an application of this uh, new version to a problem in combinatorial group theory. So let's start. Um, let's see. Yeah. So the motivating problem uh, would be uh, the Andrews Curtis conjecture, but of course uh, you can apply uh, this ideas in other settings. So um, the Andrews Curtis conjecture is, an, uh, is a problem in combinatorial group theory, and it's about understanding groups uh, through uh, via group presentations. Uh, so we all know that this uh, problem is difficult since the word problem is undecidable. And in particular, if you have two presentations, uh, you want to decide if the presented groups are isomor isomorphic, then this problem cannot be solved uh, via an algorithm. And in particular, if you have a presentation and you want to decide if this group is trivial, then you also cannot uh, solve it with an algorithm. So. Uh, this is really hard, uh, and in general, we have lots of presentation. For instance, when you compute uh, pi one, you you are uh, full of presentations, and you want to uh, deal with them. So the good news are that uh, there is a list of group operations or presentations. Um, uh, sorry, uh, operations in the presentation uh, that. Um, allows one to transform any pair of presentations of the same group into each other. So uh, the loud um, operations are called bits of transformations and uh, the following. So you're allowed to replace a relator in your presentation by its inverse or the multiplication by another one or by conjugate or by uh, or replace each relator by its image uh, under an automorphism of the free groups in the generators. You can also add a new generator and a new relator that is equal to the previously added generator. And finally, uh, you can add a new relator that is equal to one or the inverse of this operation. So if we have a one uh, among all your relators, you can eliminate it. So notice that operations one up to five uh, preserves the deficiency of the group, that is the, the relationship about the difference between the number of relators and the number of uh, generators. However, operation number six changed the deficiency. Operations uh, one up to five are called uh, Q star star transformations, and they're going to be important uh, because the Andrews Curtis conjecture says that. Um, any balanced presentation of the trivial group, so we call that balance means same number, same number of relators and generators. So uh, any balance presentation of the trivial group can be transformed into the empty presentation by a finite sequence of Q star star transformations. So what this statement says is that uh, for balance presentations of the trivial group, the operation number six is not necessary to trivialize it. Uh, so this uh, conjecture is still open. And moreover, there is a famous list of the so-called pot uh, potential contrary examples to this conjecture. So this conjecture is believed to be a false, but it should be useful to be uh, true, at least in some cases. But um, so uh, in the end, there is a list of, uh, uh, of families of uh, balanced presentations of the trivial group. Uh, and for this, uh, a list of presentations. Uh, uh, we don't know any uh, uh, list of Q star star transformations to trivialize them. So here is uh, there. There are some examples of this uh, list of potential contrary examples, and we're going to work with this uh, with this uh, families by the end of the talk. So now, from a topological point of view, uh, representations can be studied uh, via a CW complexes of dimension two. Uh, so, in particular, given a presentation, you can construct a CW complex of uh, dimension 2 Kp as follows. So, first, start with a single cell of dimension 0. 
Then for each cell of the, uh, for, sorry, for each uh, generator, attach a cell of dimension one and orient it. So at this point, you have a bouquet of circles. And now for each relator, uh, attach a cell of dimension two. And the touching map uh, corresponds to the uh, word that describes the relator. So in this example, here's our presentation P. And this is the associator um, CW complex that is a torus. So uh, a property that this uh, CW complex satisfies is that um, its fundamental group is the group presented by P. Now, conversely, given any CW complex of dimension two, we can associate a presentation that is basically a presentation of its fundamental group. And how to construct it? Well, uh, the presentation is constructed after collapsing a spanning tree or identifying a point uh, and a spanning tree uh, in the one skeleton and then uh, looking at the attaching maps of the, um, of the two sides. So in particular, in this example, this is a presentation of the fundamental group of the torus. Now, under this uh, correspondence, uh, balance groups so, or uh, balance presentations of the trivia group that are the kind of the family of presentations that we're going to work with are in correspondence uh, with contractive two complexes. Okay. And uh, last but not least, the Q star star transformations between uh, group presentations are um, in correspondence with free deformations between uh, complexes of dimension two. What does it mean? Well, this is related to the simple homotopy theory developed by Whitehead in the, in the 50s. And the basic movements, it's a stronger theory, it's a stronger homotopy theory that says that, uh, well, uh, two complexes, three deforms one into each other. If there is a sequence of expansions, that is this kind of movement, you add these two cells, um, and then it collapses, that is the opposite uh, uh, movement. So you have a, a sequence of these movements uh, and the, all the, co the complexes involved in this sequence are of dimension less or equal than three. This is this three. Okay, so uh, under this correspondence, uh, the Andrews Curtis conjecture has a, combinat uh, has a yeah, um, combinatorial uh, topological equivalent version that says that any contractive with two complex freely forms to a point. Okay, and this statement is also open um, for uh, yeah, n equal to two. If we replace here these two by uh, uh, number n different to two, this statement is true. Okay, any contractible n complex, n plus one deforms to a point for n different to two. So the only case that is remaining to prove is the case n equal to two. Great, so now what we are uh, going to try to use discrete more theory to deal with this problem. So I will start by recalling the basics in discrete more theory and then uh, the, the restatement of, the, of this theory to make it applicable to our problem. Uh, so, um, we're going to start with a regular CW complex. That is a CW complex where the attaching maps of the cells are homeomorphisms with the image. So, in particular, any simplicial complex is a regular CW complex. Here is an example. And uh, the main notion in this Quidmore theory is the notion of Morse function. So in this combinatorial setting, a Morse function is a function from our complex K into the real numbers. Uh, so basically it's a labeling of the cells in such a way that it satisfies the following condition. For every cell of the complex, um, every, uh, the number of faces and cofaces for which the value of F does not increase with the dimension is at most one. This is uh, what we have in this line. So a simple example, if you label the cells of your complex according to the dimension, this is a more function. Okay, oh, sorry. Here is another example of more function. Uh, so you can check that this requirement is fulfilled in this example. <clears throat> and now given the Morse function, uh, we have the notion of critical cell. That is a cell uh, for which the values of of the Morse function in every phase and co-phase increase with the dimension. 
So, in the case of uh, the labeling according to dimension, all the cells are critical, okay? In our example, I, uh, I uh, color the, the, in orange the, the critical cells. And we're going to see in a minute that the less uh, the number of critical cells, the better. And something uh, interesting to note um, with respect to Morse function is that they induce a pairing or matching between uh, cells that are not critical. And this pairing will have uh, some uh, geometric and combinatorial meaning uh, in a minute. So, this is uh, the main theory in mean, discrete more theory, uh, stated by Foreman in the 90s, and says that if you have a regular CW complex and a Morse function, then uh, K is homotopy equivalent to a new CW complex, we're going to call it KM, uh, the Morse complex with exactly one cell of dimension K for each cell of the same dimension uh, that is critical, okay? Uh, so, in our example, this is uh, the regular complex, uh, this is the labeling, here are the critical cells, and uh, we have, um, yeah, that uh, the, the complex KM has this decomposition, but it's not enough to reconstruct the uh, homotopy type of K. Even if we know the, if we have information about the incident of the critical cells. So our uh, goals in, uh, in this talk are going to be uh, to reconstruct concretely, including the attaching maps of the Morse complex. And secondly, to recover information about not only the homotopy type of K, but also about its simple homotopy type. And moreover, if the dimension of the complex is N, information about its N plus one deformation class, in order to apply then to the case N equal to two and understand three deformation classes of complexes. So let's start. Uh, so here is uh, a picture where uh, you have a detail of uh, sort of the, the proof of the main theorem uh, stated by Foreman. So you have the Morse function and you have the critical cells, but you also uh, have a definition of what's called the level subcomplex. That is the subcomplex of the original complex for which the value of the cells uh, under the Morse function F is less or equal than some number C. So for instance, these are the sublevel complexes that we have in this example. And we can see that at each step, we have either or a critical cell and we change the homotopy type, or we, have, uh, we don't have um, critical cells and we have collapses yeah, we don't uh, uh, change the, the homotopy type of the complex every time we are going through these uh, cells that are not critical, okay? Uh, so here we get stuck and then we remove this critical cell and then we continue the collapsing and we don't change the homotopy type and then and here we remove this critical cell and so on. So, um, wait. Uh, so what, something that is interesting that we note is that this sequence of subcomplexes of K encodes the, uh, all the uh, information that it's needed to reconstruct the Morse complex. So in other words, it's equivalent to have a discrete Morse function with some uh, set of critical cells and, and to have a sequence of subcomplexes of our uh, original complex in such a way you, you have either a collapse or you attach new, new cells, and the non collapsed cells is a set C. Okay, so uh, let's pay attention to the cases when uh, we change the homotopy type. So this is the simplest situation. Uh, you have a collapse, and then you attach a new cell. This, is a, this cell play, uh, plays the role of the critical cell. So you attach a new cell to your original complex. So it can be proved that there is a, a, this a collapse here in this an n plus one deformation where n is the dimension of the complex, an n plus one deformation from the original uh, complex with the, the new attached cell 
into this complex that is constructed with, uh, after attaching to L, this cell, where the attaching map of this cell is the composition of the original attaching map and the uh, strong reformation recharge induced by uh, this collapse. Okay, so this is a very a simple case, but of course, um, yeah, so uh, let's say something uh, before continuing. So this uh, generalization of collapse, so here we have a collapse and then you add a new cell. So this is a general notion uh, is called an internal collapse. Okay, so you have a collapse internally and then you attach new cells. So, in our general setting, what we have is several internal collapses. We attach several cells in time, the critical cells, or you have several collapses in the sequence of subcomplexes of K. So, we could prove that you still have an N plus one deformation. You have to pay a lot of attention in this uh, deformation uh, here to uh, keep this n plus one as the, 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 the highest dimension, but you have an n plus one deformation from the original complex into the smallest complex to which you attach uh, all the cells that you don't collapse. And these cells are attached with the composition of the original attaching maps, and you iteratively uh, compose it with the um, with the, the, the strong deformation the tracks induced by the by these uh, collapses. So uh, inductively you can reconstruct these attaching maps. And now putting all together, what we have is um, uh, yeah, so we have uh, this new statement of the uh, main theorem in the squid morphia that says that given a CW complex of dimension n, now we're going to pay attention to the dimension and a discrete mode function, then uh, this discrete mode function induces this sequence of subcomplexes and you have either the collapse or this attaching of these new cells that um, altogether are the, um, the critical cells. And uh, we have proved that under this situation, we have an N plus one deformation from the original complex into this new complex that is a reconstruction of the Morse complex. Great. So let's see all this stuff in an example. This is our torus with the, the Morse function. Here, uh, 13 means that uh, the, both the one cell and the two cell are um, label with the number 13 and uh, so in general what we have here is in orange the critical cells and instead of removing critical cells at each step we track the evolution of the uh, attaching map so here you have this internal collapse 13 and then this is a new attaching map and so on you continue uh, performing the the internal collapses here you perform the internal collapse associated to the pair of cells uh, label with five and then with three and then with two. And this is the complex that you obtain. And at each step, you uh, keep the three deformation class of the original complex. Uh, you can see that in this example, this is a minimal CW structure of uh, this um, triangulation of the torus. Great, so let's try to apply these ideas into uh, our problem in group presentations. So we are going to start with a, a group presentation and then uh, we compute the associated complex. Um, so this complex is not regular. So we compute the barycentric subdivision in order to uh, make it regular. And then, and then, yeah. So, and then uh, we endow this complex with the Morse function. And now we compute the Morse complex. So this is a reduction or simplification of this original complex. And finally, compute the associated presentation of the pi one of this complex. We have proved that these, uh, at the level of complexes, these two complexes are uh, three deformed one into the other. So at the level of presentations, we have a Q star star transformation. So uh, you start with the presentation and you obtain another one in the same class. And the hope is that this new presentation is more, is more tractable uh, than the original one. So uh, 
I have another good news. Uh, the good news is uh, that we have an algorithm that takes as input the original presentation, your favorite presentation, and then uh, given a Morse function, uh, you uh, obtain as output this new presentation in the same class. Great. So let's see uh, how this algorithm works in a very simple example, just to have an idea. Uh, so here's a very simple presentation, and this is the associative uh, complex. So here you have uh, the two cell associated to the, the relator x to the square, and here the, the, the two cell associated to the, the relator x, y to the minus one. And uh, then you uh, compute a discrete more function over this complex, and then we're going to compute the uh, presentation um, associated to the, the Morse complex. So uh, we describe the algorithm. Um, so um, we start with a very huge presentation whose uh, generators are all this, the cells of dimension one. Uh, the relators are, uh, on the one hand, the, the, sorry, the cells of dimension one that are not critical. And uh, on the other hand, uh, all uh, we have uh, one relator for each cell of dimension two uh, describing the attaching map. Okay? Well, of course, here we have uh, that this relate this relator says that x2, a3 up to x5 are equal to one, so we can replace in the rest of the relators and remove them. This is equivalent to a collapse some graph in the one skeleton of this complex. And now the next step is to uh, perform the uh, internal collapses. So here you have the internal collapse associated to the cells label with uh, 15. So here's the associated uh, relator and generator. And the internal collapse at the level of complexes means at the level of presentations that uh, you have to uh, rewrite this generator in terms of the rest of the world and the rest of the relator, replacing the rest of the relators in these cases in this um, in this world, and then eliminate this generator and this relator. All these operations can be proved that are Q star star transformations. So uh, what we are looking in this example is how uh, uh, this internal collapse uh, transforms these presentations. So here is the internal collapse associated to the pairing of cells with the label uh, 14 and so on. So to perform this procedure iteratively and, uh, up to your, uh, uh, until you don't have any internal collapse to perform and you have a new presentation in the same class uh, than the original. In this case, this is very simple to see, but uh, we apply this method in more complicated examples. And what we prove is that in these uh, uh, potential control examples, uh, we obtain a new presentation using this procedure that uh, was a Q star star trivialisable. So we prove that these three examples uh, satisfies uh, the Anders Cartes conjecture. Notice that the, the last example is infinite. The first example was previously proved uh, using genetic algorithms, but uh, the second and the third example is new. So um, here are some references. The roots of this uh, work are in my PhD thesis. Uh, there is a preprint, a new version of this preprint is coming soon. And there is code related to the algorithms that I mentioned in Sage and in GAP. So if you're not working with the Anders Cartes conjecture, you can also take your favorite presentation and try to trivialize it. And you may have better performance than the, um, the, present, the, the output that you obtain with the classical uh, algorithms that are in Sage or, or GAP. Uh, we have a work in progress related to TDA, the computation of persistent fundamental group of point clouds. And that's all that I want to say. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yes, very good. Questions or comments?
I'll just say, yeah, there you go. Thank you, and that there's, there's surely a lot of people in the audience who can ask a question here. <laughs> uh, there's Jonathan raising his hand. Uh, yes. Jimena, I, I didn't understand in, in the algorithm, uh, how do you choose the, the Morse function uh, in the, the, the very centric subdivision of the standard complex? Yeah, so uh, this is something that you have to say to the algorithm. Uh, okay. So, oh, okay. yeah, so you compute, uh, yeah, so I, I have mentioned posits in this talk because of the time, but uh, what you do is, um, so let's say here, uh, you associate here the associated uh, phase posit, mm -hmm. and then you compute an acyclic matching in this posit. Okay. So, and uh, cyclic uh, matches can be generated uh, randomly if you uh, randomly shuffle your the set of vertices. So, uh, in this example, so I, I will um, show you what I did. Um, so, for instance, this is a fixed example. So, what I did is to randomly generate a uh, Morse function that is equivalent to generate. Um, Acyclic matchings in the in the posit. Uh, in a few seconds, you find some uh, some matching, uh, and uh, in such a way that the new presentation that you obtain is easily trivialized. Okay, Same okay. Uh, holds but for you this have to example. choose it. Uh, I mean, you have to give this to, to the algorithm. It's something that, that you have to choose. It's something that you have to choose, or uh what i what i do is uh, i don't choose the the matching i try i generate it um you can generate randomly uh some okay. amount of match uh matchings and obtain your presentations and, and that's all in the last case what i did is to choose a, a fixed matching mm -hmm. uh that works uh inductively for the different values of q and then I prove uh, concretely that it, at each example you can trivialize it uh, inductively. But uh, in general, if you want to apply this method, uh, you can say how many matchings you want to try, for instance, randomly. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this is. But it's part of the input. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Any other question or comment? I have one. If nobody else does, I know this is far from your uh, intended applications, but it seems to me that the passage from presentations to geometric objects is something that you could uh, you could try to do for an arbitrary algebra theory rather than for a theory of groups. Is it something that anyone has tried? Uh, what do you mean for arbitrary? Um... Algebraic theory. Yes, rather than groups, you take any anything that you can present with operations and equations, and then you have um, a reasonable notion of presentation for any algebra. Okay. Then you could try uh, to build a geometric object out of a, a presentation, say the theory of uh, rings or the Newton ring. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I, yeah, I'm not sure, but uh, surely there is something similar. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, so I, I'm not sure, but I know that there is in theory of deformation of algebra, there is something similar that you can construct, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure um, about the details of the, of the construction, yeah. But would you say there's something essential about groups that lets you build uh, the, the complex? Uh, so in this case, you construct a complex that preserves the fundamental group, but also preserves uh, more things because um, this transformation between groups preserves some geometrical aspect. Uh, um, so you don't not only preserve the fundamental group of the complexes, but also you preserve the its uh, homotopy type when you transform the groups. So uh, it's very um, specific that you have these complexes of dimension two. And uh, by constructing these complexes, that uh, respects the fundamental group presented by the uh, presented by the, the group. You also preserve or you encode information about the homotopy type. It's important, you know, uh, of uh, the complexes. So it's very, um, yeah, very strict or uh, this uh, relationship. 
So yeah, I know that there are many other uh, situations where a, a geometric object encodes information about the algebraic operations, and then you work from the topological side. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure about the details. Many thanks. Anyone else? If not, then let's thank the speaker again. And uh, 